party leader of Nakenya Kenya is Martha Karua. Um, we know Martha Karua. She uh, served, of course, as an MP. She has been a cabinet uh, minister. She has been a justice minister in the country now. She is the leader of Na Kenya. And what is Na Kenya? Na Kenya is a national political party founded on the guiding democratic principles of justice, integrity, human dignity, community, equity, economic empowerment, and social transformation. Founded on the 3rd of June 2006 as a result of a historic constitutional referendum held in 2005, whose outcome led to the fallout amongst leaders that formed the ruling coalition NARC. So the philosophy of NARC Kenya is one Kenya, one nation, one people, premised on the social democratic ideology. So it's a social democratic, you know, um, kind of party. And now the leader of, of NARC Kenya is joining us in the studio. We'll be talking to her shortly. Of course, she'll tell us about her years uh, working in public service. She's worked in public service. She's uh, served as a state officer. She uh, has served as a, polit as a politician. She is the leader of a political party. She has been a presidential candidate. We also know that she's taken a court out of this country's borders, a petition out of the country's borders into the east african court of justice and of course we want to know how far this case is going and why she thought that you know the supreme court is not the end is taking it also further from this uh, you know some people really so does does mother really want that governorship so much that <laughs> she has to take it all the way to arusha can't you just be satisfied with one yeah. thing <laughs> right mm. <laughs> she's in the studio so as she settles in that's some of the questions that we're going to be asking so thank you very much for joining us martha and uh, karibu Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of course the conversation that we're going to have is uh, going to be premised a lot on, on your years in public service. Um, the first thing, of course, is we know that you worked, you've worked in the justice system for many years and then you got into parliament. And when you were in parliament, the one thing that people remember is you walking out of a Moy function. Now that uh, the former president is dying, we, has died and uh, we are looking back at the years. Let's start with that. You walked out of a Moi function. As I was entitled to. So what is it that made you walk? What were you unhappy about on this particular day? Like you you, you uh, know uh, I uh, walked, but you have not checked why I walked mm. out. Mm. Yes. Uh, why you did know, you walk yeah, out? That's it. Asking, why? Kanu had this habit of uh, disparaging the opposition. Mm. Mm. So Moi has come to Kirinyaga. And I've given him respect as head of state, therefore I've gone to meet him as one of the leaders. And we go into the stadium where the Harambe was. They're giving chance to Kanu people to talk. And the Kanu local chairman starts insulting the opposition and even declaring that we are mad to think that Kenya can be uh, led from Mudaya. Mm. Mm. That was a direct insult to me and my party. Yeah. Mm. You were and in the Democratic to, Party at that yes, point. Yes, and to my then leader, the then leader of my party, President, um, retired President uh, Kibaki. So I just quietly tell um, President Moy, who was just one seat away from me, between me and him was Henry Koske, who was then the Minister for Education. Mm. So I tell him, you've got to give me a chance to defend my party. Mm. Then he asks me what I'm going to say if he gives me a chance. And I tell him, come on, I can't tell you what I'm going to say. I can only assure you I'll give you your due respect as head of state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he said to Taona, but the body language told me he won't. Mm. So I just surveyed the area and got ready. I couldn't walk out on the, you know, the, the chairman <laughs> talking or even the ministers. <laughs> I want to walk you out on moment. the sponsor mm. Mm. because if he's unhappy with the way they are talking, he's in charge. He could have done something about, about it because mm. mm. the first thing I asked him is, how can you let your people talk like this? Mm. Then he said it's not him and he wouldn't do like that. So what I did was to survey the place and I saw the entrance that I'm going to use <laughs> to exit because mm -hmm. you can't walk behind him. Mm -hmm. mm. It would look like an attack. Mm. So when he rose to speak, I took the side entrance, went in front of him and gave him the DP salute and walked out. If I can't talk, I can at least stage a silent protest, protest. which is not against the law. 
I'm not disturbing the meeting. I'm mm. just exiting mm. as I'm entitled to and I did. Mm. Yeah. It was quite impactful because yeah. people noticed it and people remember. Among the things that people remember as uh, one way of protesting, of leaders protesting, was that Martha Karua walking out and you became the iron lady from that moment. On. It had results mm. because from then on, mm. he never ignored the opposition in his gatherings. From Kirinyaga, he went to Meru. Mm. He allowed Kiraito Murungi and the late Mueraria to address the meeting. Mm -hmm. He went to Kakamega. He allowed Wamunyini and others to address the meetings. From there on, that was the mark of the so opposition. So this was a catalyst? This was a catalyst for that to come it through? It did become, and I realized even a president mm. doesn't like a walkout in a, pub, you know, an mm. embarrassment in a public meeting. Mm. So just to keep order in his meetings, he allowed the opposition to have its place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And nothing yeah. negative came out of that, I mean, of, of, of allowing the, the leaders to speak. He didn't undermine his leadership, he didn't undermine not his authority at, not at, at all. Point. And the average person, you may differ with him, but you recognize that he's your president. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is the sense in which I had gone to meet him. Mm. I'm opposition, mm -hmm. but he's the president of the country, therefore my president. So. Yeah. Joining us on the hot seat is Martha Karua, NAC Kenya party leader. Of course, we were, you were telling us about those th that particular incident yes. and the game changer incident when you walked out of a public uh, meeting attended by the former president. And then, of course, now tell us after that, how did you? How was your interaction with the former president? You know, really, there was zero interaction when we were MPs, except if there's something. Yeah. I interacted with the, the late president Moi on several occasions as an MP. One in 1997, that's way before the walkout, when we had the IPPG mm -hmm. and uh, we were invited to State House to go and report the recommendations of the committee. The uh, other times is uh, when we had an initiative for constitutional review in 1998 and I was the one of the joint secretaries of the, uh, what shall, shall I call it, uh, drafting committee mm. you know helping to draft the review process bill so i had several interactions on that level but interacting with him properly was when he had retired mm -hmm. and i was a minister of government the first year president kibaki invited him on one of the national days and i sat with him mm. in uh, at, at state house and we we were chatting laughing chatting about the water sector about uh, public uh, general issues mm -hmm. then thereafter during the 208 after the disputed elections yeah. and uh, the chaos that attended when we were negotiating he was anxious to know what was going on mm. and I was requested to brief him mm. on behalf of uh, the government mm. so I would go to Cabernet Gardens I went once or twice we had tea then thereafter now, because I had come to get acquainted with him, I went on one or two other occasions on my own now to discuss certain issues with him. And at a personal level, he's really a very uh, warm person. Mm -hmm. uh, just and very down to earth. He's an ordinary muse. An ordinary muse. We just were talking, <laughs> very easy to, to talk to and to relate to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking back at his years as a president, of yeah. course, at that point, you are an adult. You, you are seeing what uh, was happening around the country. How would you describe it? I think, like everybody else, he had his strong and weak points. What I remember as an opposition person is the uh, anger that the economy had been completely run down. Mm -hmm. And that was the, a matter of fact when we took over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About the rule of law, about democracy. In fact, I went into politics because of the oppression of the one-party state mm. and the appetite of the one-party state to take over institutions. After taking over Kotu and uh, Maendeleo ya Wanawake, mm. he did pronounce in a public meeting that he would like to affiliate the law society. So as young lawyers, <laughs> we started now pushing our leader, our then leadership, mm. whom we thought were leaning close to the government mm. after the chair had been appointed to a parastato. Mm -hmm. So my activism in the law society spread over to activism in politics because I realized you can't practice your profession in a vacuum. Mm. 
Mm. It's within the socio-economic and political context. Mm. And therefore, we started agitating for wider democratic space for adherence to the rule of law. On the other hand, when you try to look objectively, he did something in the education sector. For me, that was is his strongest legacy. Mm. Starting of many schools, right. starting of uh, universities, and maybe we could also help, uh, talk of the expansion of uh, the uh, bed capacity in hospitals, Nyaya wards, because mm. it's minus more equipment. But yeah. you could see he was focusing on the rising population. If we had waited for the right infrastructure before that expansion, mm. then a lot of children were going to miss in education. Mm. And I realized this much later when um, I was invited as a guest to one of the universities, to Eldoret campus, the, the campus that is off Eldoret. Mm. And as we were waiting, we were discussing with the lecturers. And when we tried a rough count, we realized that in public universities, as of 208, together with the parallel and the regular courses, mm -hmm. the public universities had roughly about 140,000 students. Whoa. Wow. I remembered my days when there was only one university, University of Nairobi, mm -hmm. with a total of 3,000 students. So I realized the leap. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just hit me that this man's legacy is in education. In education. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I told him so when we were having tea at his cabinet gardens mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. of, you know, discussing politics. And he lit up Mm. You know, he was excited. At least, yeah. at, at least yeah. somebody noticed. Mm. No, yeah. at least not just somebody, but I was one of uh, his critics. His critics mm -hmm. <laughs> that we are recognizing think, his legacy done. because that time it sounded like there was nothing good mm. Mm. that could come out. Mm. But truly, there was something good. But there are things, also mistakes, we must learn from, avoid repeating. The tragedy is that yeah. we are repeating those mistakes knowingly because hindsight should be able to help us mm. yes when you say that the economy was run down when mm. uh, the dark government took over yeah. what exactly had happened what 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 is it that we saw was it devoid of whatever else was happening within the largest sphere of of, of 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 this planet in other countries or was it just a kenyan problem irrespective of what was happening elsewhere yes there was mismanagement of the economy, mm. which is happening even today because when you allow people to help themselves from public coffers, mm. mm. help themselves. When a system, a polite way of putting being it. very polite, yeah, you know, <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. To, to, to steal, yeah. to yeah. rob ourselves. When you allow leaders to rob their country, when you misapply resources, mm. when you do not put the priorities right then the result is running down the economy. Today, we should be experiencing a boom even in, uh, in terms of development. Mm. But when there is theft, like uh, let's take for instance water, when money is pumped into water and it goes into people's pockets, the result is that the problems of yesterday still are there. Mm -hmm. When health, the resources for health are put in people's pockets. And these are just examples. Yep. When money is devolved to the counties and then it ends up making millionaires and billionaires of leaders instead of serving the people it's supposed to serve, that's mismanaging the economy, whether at the county level mm. or at the national level. And I think that irrespective of what was happening worldwide, there was mismanagement of the economy. Unfortunately, we haven't learned. There's still, still quite a bit on. of mismanagement mm -hmm. of the economy. Yeah. Mm. When did we, I mean, look, just looking at the timeline, yeah. when, would you, when did we allow this to happen? And do you think as leaders, we see that, that, that leaders see when it actually happened and how it has been progressing over time to I then say perhaps to do something about it i think it started in the first republic mm. maybe differently mm. because those days we didn't hear scandals of money stolen right mm. what we n we know of that era is that land meant for squatters mm -hmm. was going to individuals mm -hmm. that civil servants took advantage of they are being in high places to manipulate certain opportunities to go to them. Mm. Then 
gradually that is what now metamorphose and then of course we know the smuggling period mm -hmm. where leaders were smuggling impoverishing the farmer by smuggling coffee mm -hmm. impoverishing uh, the country and mismanaging our wildlife by uh, you know illegal, illegal trade, game, yeah. tra trade in trophy mm -hmm. so you can see these things started early they metamorphose now not just to opportunity but to direct theft of public funds so it's a journey that we have uh, made you know which is not good and uh, we should learn were you able and, uh, as a leader uh, martha to mm -hmm. speak out to speak Always. out directly and i mean clearly we've heard we heard in many occasions where you did yeah but were you able to speak out then with results and people being able leaders being able to see when you ask with results if you're speaking and you are outside of government mm. what results can you have right you can have results of opening the eyes of the country mm. we did that in activism years and in opposition mm. until the country agreed to change the regime mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd, we did in government, and I must say that the Kibaki government did very well for the economy initially. And the same old habits crept in. You remember the angro leasing coming yeah. up, mm -hmm. which means that uh, people are now getting co-opted by the deep state once again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spoke out even as a member of government. And when I thought that as government, we were not trying hard enough Mm -hmm. to kick to push away to, to stop the vices i resigned because i couldn't be counted mm -hmm. inside you know mm -hmm. those happenings you try your best and so long as you believe there is an effort mm -hmm. to curb the mm -hmm. bad practices mm -hmm. then one can be part of that government mm -hmm. but if I believe we are not making an effort and this happened during the coalition government when I could see now it's like we have accommodated completely I exited well, I, so that mm. I'm able to speak from outside without bearing responsibility. But that's, what is happening. that's where also some people would uh, come in and, and, you know, raise questions about you and say, so you had an opportunity. You served in government. You rose to a level where you are cabinet minister for justice. You yeah. are the one who is actually in charge of ensuring that we follow the rule of law. And those that have broken the law are brought to book. And then you raise your hands up and say, you know what, I can't do this. Why the challenge is when the media, you and the rest of you, <laughs> are not educating the public on the role of a minister, mm. the role of a president, that is the whole tragedy. Mm. And that's why our people will never understand or have not understood fully why a person leaves government. Mm. The person in charge of a government is the president yep. in our setup. A minister, whatever docket you hold, mm -hmm. you are holding it. On behalf of the president therefore the back stops with him mm -hmm. and you cannot command another minister mm -hmm. in kenya even when there was a justice docket mm -hmm. the attorney general who was then determining prosecutions because the director of public prosecutions was not independent the way he, he is today. To the mm -hmm. it means the attorney general decides who to prosecute and who not to prosecute mm -hmm. yes and he has powers to order investigations. The Minister of Justice could order investigations in matters of graft. Mm. But you cannot order prosecution. Right. You cannot order the police. In countries like Uganda, Ghana, the Minister of Justice was also the Attorney General. Mm. So you are not able to do anything. And if your boss is not doing, is not it's able not to coordinate and to apply enough pressure, you are sort of... Um, you're in limbo. Yeah, huh. you, you're a lame duck. Right. You are, I'm speaking on policy. I used to speak on policy against corruption. Mm -hmm. But I cannot do anything about prosecutions. You are calling, you are coordinating the fight, therefore calling the various agencies to your office so that you all discuss what are the bottlenecks. And you're asking the ESCC what they are doing and there's Ringera telling you they are independent. I'm saying you're not independent from uh, oversight. <laughs> All we are asking is for you to tell us what is happening. What is going on, right? Very little you can do. But really, the problem was beyond that. Mm. Because if individuals who are implicated in doing some of those things are seated inside the same government you are in. Mm -hmm. And it started showing up because during the maid scam scandal, we differed mm -hmm. in a cabinet meeting. Mm -hmm. We differed over Triton. And I'm saying I can't be party to this. So I'm going to parliament to vote against a fellow minister. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see the cracks were beginning to show. It was time to leave. Mm. There is no need of receiving salary from the people of Kenya as a minister if your hands are tied and you're not able to be effective. I remained insofar as I could feel that I was of help to Kenyans. If I have no help, it was at great cost to me because you lose benefits, mm. you lose salary, mm. you lose prestige, you lose many perks. But it's something I had to do mm. so that I can live with myself. So now Kenya party leader Martha Karua is on the hot seat in the situation this morning. And just before we move on the conversation, let's stick to that point where you said you resigned because you felt that, um, you know, you're, you were not being effective. Yeah. And you're sitting there in cabinet, you're discussing things in cabinet. The owner of the government, so to speak, the president is chairing the cabinet yeah. meetings. You're raising these issues and action is not being taken. Why would you say that... Would you think the president was not taking action? L let me first say that uh, the things that started going wrong, especially for the coalition government, was during appointments. And I raised the issue that you cannot appoint people without integrity. But remember, half the names were coming from one side, half from the other. Mm. So other minders of the president said that an exception has to be made. So I'm already unhappy with certain appointments. Characters. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot knowingly appoint people who have baggage. You see? Mm. And then these things start coming up and there is seemingly no will to, uh, to, to, to put things right. Because mm. remember that uh, cabinet was a different cabinet mm. with uh, a president, with a prime minister, with both sides. Mm -hmm. And you'll be very surprised that uh, after the grand standing when we were forming the government <laughs> in cabinet, mm -hmm. it was surprising that people started coalescing around interests. Mm -hmm. So you cannot say it is this side and it's not this side. Right. You became because one. I re no, no, no. <laughs> many. Because I remember during the, 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 the May scandal, mm -hmm. the late Musa William Temama was firmly on the side of the people. Obviously, there were others who were quiet, so you will not, and are not saying anything, so you will not know on which side. Mm. Mm. Some may be on the side of the people, but are afraid to clash with colleagues. Yeah. So in cabinet, you don't go to discuss all the topics. As a minister, you report to the president. And if it was something coming under the prime minister, there were things he was coordinating. But basically, you report to the president and brief him what is going on. Mm. Mm. So he's the final answer to most of the issues if it is another ministry that is giving the whole thing a problem it's him who can find out and direct that minister because you have no power mm -hmm. to direct a fellow minister mm. so i felt that that wasn't working we had lost that and there wasn't will within government to act mm. and i just you, said let me if, let if, me. if someone said uh mm. that you are an idealist mm. And then yeah. ask the question, yeah. how likely is idealism, like, well, is idealism likely to survive in a political environment? What would yes, you say? Yes, it, it is. And I remember the first Kibaki years before the, these issues came. Mm. You saw the nation wake up. Mm. Some of the effects on the economy are good signs are from those days. It is possible. And it is not possible that they will be without mistakes. Mm. But there has to be a will to whip people back mm -hmm. to ethical ways of doing things and to punish those who are caught, mm -hmm. you know. Even in a club, not a country, if you don't follow the rules, there will be no club. Right. People are glued together by common ideals mm -hmm. and by rules that punish those who veer off. Mm -hmm. Those that whip people back to the common objective. So in a country... Not following the rule of law is allowing indiscipline and chaos. But in your idealism, yeah. do you also yeah. have room for compromise? So you understand, for example, C.T. Muga's uh, you know, his, uh, yeah. stand is on, yeah. on, on a matter is this, and this is where you stand. But then you see, um, let, me, let me give some, some room or some space. Let me seed some ground. That's how come I, was, I became a minister in the second uh, term, even knowing that unsuitable people had populated. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but you first give it a chance, a chance but yes. it's not working. Yeah. You leave. I think what we must agree as a nation, let's not give ourselves 
the lowest standards possible. Let's strive to the highest. To highest standard. You may never attain the highest. The second generation will come also striving mm -hmm. for the highest. But this accepting the worst possible standard, mm. we are actually doing ourselves in, then we also have no right to complain when services are bad, mm. when we suffer, mm. because then we are the others of our own misfortune. Mm -hmm. You know, as individuals, we always strive for the best. You want the best for your family. Therefore, the little money or much money you have you will bargain very hard whenever you are doing purchases. Mm. Whenever you are investing, whether in a school or in a whatever, you will try to get the best. We are not asked to do more for a country. Just to try to get the best deal you can all the time in the job you're doing. Whether it is in thinking, whether it is in acting, mm -hmm. act in the best interest. That's how, all that we are asking. The how, I mean, it, it makes sense to us as we yeah. hear it now, Martha. But how mm. come then some leaders just don't seem to get the memo? I'm sorry. but it, uh, They don't get it what, because the populace, mm. the populace don't get it too. Mm. Because you're going to complain about somebody and then you will elect. If same. not the same, same person, mm. a replica or a worse person. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we lose that right to complain. I have heard people talking in the streets mm. and in social places. Oh, everybody steals. Mm -hmm. It's better a thief mm -hmm. who brings something small back. Mm. And I say to myself, there's no better thief. A thief is a thief, mm -hmm. period. <laughs> if there's a better thief, allow the village thief in your village. And if you live in town, in your neighborhood, mm. to take away just something small from you. That chicken that may be in your compound. You. That came from, if you have not rearing chicken, it could have come with an, a friend from up country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allow them to steal it, cook it. Mm -hmm. And after they've eaten the meat mm -hmm. to make with soup for you yeah, with, the, with the lower legs. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> the no, 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 With the claws. With the claws which have nothing at all. Mm -hmm. They'll make soup for you with that. Then you can say, oh, what a nice thief, mm. what a generous thief. At least thief. he gave me something. He gave me something. Mm. Like you couldn't cook your own chicken. Mm. Our people <laughs> fail to connect mm. that public funds are like that chicken because you've contributed to those public funds. Mm -hmm. Even when you're not working, anything you buy from that unga for ugali to that matato you bought, you are a taxpayer because all those things have been taxed. That mutumba you are wearing. Taxes have been paid for it. So when you buy it, you're paying taxes. Mm -hmm. That baby on your back, their diaper, their milk, it's taxed. This is our collective money. Whoever steals it means you'll not get health services. You or your loved one will die of a disease that could have been curable. Mm -hmm. Your child will not get education. You'll not get roads. We never connect mm -hmm. theft of public mm -hmm. funds with our own with suffering. Life. And I'm saying because mm -hmm. this is our country. And nobody else will come and clear this mess. It's you and me. As people in a position of influence, because media has a lot of influence, mm. together with other people of goodwill, why don't we make it our business to tell people daily, to break it down? These days, people think a billion is a million. Mm. The only way people can understand the difference is by being able to know that a billion can transform the health facilities of any county, including yeah. Nairobi, mm. that a billion can transform your schools, the infrastructure of your schools, that a billion could probably pay in an average county the school fees of all the students for that year so that they can understand the magnitude mm. of the money stolen from them. They can be angry and they can react appropriately on voting day the way they reacted in 2002, mm. pretty much mm. majority of Kenyans were fed up with the Kanuera mm. and they voted collectively to remove it. Mm. We're not asking for an uprising. Mm. We are asking for a revolution the of, the mind. Mind. of the mind leading to a revolution of the ballot. Mm. In a county, even if you elect a very good governor and terrible MCAs, Nothing will, Nothing work. will mm -hmm. work. You see, you saw how Kibwana's first term was taken by his sacrifice of saying, mm -hmm. let us all go home. He did a great service to devolution. Mm. So we need people thinking and electing from the MCAs upwards, mm. good leadership that can take them somewhere. And when we talk good leadership, I want to remind Kenyans,
that this particular season, since the elections of 2017, leaders have just been talking about 2022, like they were elected mm -hmm. to campaign for 2022. Yep. It's only recently when there was a clash that they have now started talking about the economy. Two and a half years later, half time, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. right. is when they have talked. And not About permanently. This, yeah. Only once when castigating one jabs. side of the government mm -hmm. yeah. to throw jabs at each other. Thereafter, it's all about BBI. Mm. Yeah. Talking well, about since BBI. Since we talked about it, mm. maybe then we can ask you, you know, yes. your views. We'd like to know, I mean, generally, and then we can go into details on the, f on the face of it. Uh, I mean... Uh, what do you think about the BBI? On the face of it, and I told them when we went to present, because I led NAC Kenya to present to BBI, mm. they were not properly constituted. They are not inclusive as is required by the constitution mm. because they represent just two sides, mm. ODM and Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And the constitution, Article 10, talks of inclusiveness. Mm. They ought to have sought representation from civil society, from political parties outside parliament. And don't ask me how they could accommodate all the parties. There is center for multi-party development which brings all parties together. Mm. So even if you just want one or two from those out parliaments, it's possible. Even the churches, you can't bring all of them. But yeah. there's a way we do it. There's an umbrella you can... Mm -hmm. So you, it should have been inclusive. That I told them. Number two, the recommendations they made. But before you move on, yeah. you're talking about that inclusivity. So we've got some church leaders there as well. We've got some women Appointed leaders. by who? Because the process is very important. So the inclusivity comes from the, how, who, who select Bishop it's allowing, Lawi Matthew. It's allowing sectors to feel that they have a stake at what is going on. Mm -hmm. Because if it's the two groupings only, you are locking out the rest of the country. Yes. Unfortunately, it is the same grouping that has been again gazetted. Number two, I have no quarrel with most of their recommendations. And most of their recommendations do not need constitutional review at all. Mm. It could be happening now. Number, <laughs> yes. And those that they say need constitutional review mm. are actually already provided in the constitution, mm -hmm. including inclusivity, mm -hmm. including gender balance. All of them are represented, including how to deal mm. with each other. Mm -hmm. I do not agree that we should amend the constitution to accommodate runner-ups in elections. Mm. If we do that, and if we are genuine, let's then have something that accommodates the runner-up for MCA, mm. you, you, you come up to MP, mm -hmm. you come up to senator, mm. to women governor. rep, yeah. to governor, then you can say, then to president, then you can say you are accommodating everybody. Mm. It doesn't make sense. What we really need is electoral justice. Mm. You see, if we find a way how we can enforce our electoral laws, how we can make our elections clean, that is the whole problem. Mm. Yeah. This is a situation room. Martha Karua, the now Kenya party leader, is in the studio. We're talking about BBI now. Of course, we also want to hear what you have to say. You can post this on your on our social media platforms, Spice FM KE on Facebook at Spice FM KE on Twitter. You are there in the IPPG. That was one way of just uh, a small way of trying to ensure that the next general election was done better. Came up with the constitution. Constitution review talks about IEBC. Now we're still talking about elections. So many years down the road. What is it that we need to do? Good things have happened from all those efforts. After IPPG, which opened campaign for opposition because then we no longer needed licenses to hold a rally, we were eventually able to remove Kanu in 2002 mm -hmm. because we also could be heard on the airwaves and we could traverse the country. So reforms are not for nothing. Mm -hmm. They may not be at the pace we want, but it's good. The constitution we have has not solved all our problems, mm. although it has a capacity to, because we are resistant to change. Mm -hmm. It has been poorly implemented. Yep. And I actually say we may not need to open up the constitution. What we need to do is to obey it faithfully. Coming to elections, what do we need to do? Our problem is not the electoral law. Our problem is not the constitution. Mm -hmm. Our problem is our behavior as Kenyans. The political class, the contestants, everybody is trying to outsteal the other. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Yes. Then those who are given the responsibility of manning or being the, man, uh, the, the, the workforce in the elections, 
the clerks, the presiding officers, the returning officers, a great number of them are only too willing to be co-opted for something small. You see? So whoever you bring is going to be contaminated by us. Mm. Mm. The political the political class. class us ah, guys, us no, voters. Are no, okay. also the voters because you are the ones who mm. are sent. Mm. No leader will go to the polling station to right, meet. Yeah. He mm. will send you as one uh, as it's it's a agenda, yes. so as it's it parties right, yeah. and their supporters. Mm. Okay. So for me, I've been looking at what happens around the world, and one of the things we recommended, and it happened to be in um, the recommendations of BBI. I don't know who else, maybe other people also recommended the same, is that election officials in this country should only be engaged once in a lifetime. Mm. It's like the jury. Mm. Mm. You work for the electoral commission. Next election, you are not there. You're not there. So that you stop using it for, for rent seeking or people stop focusing on you and hunting you down. Number two, I've seen in other democracies, notably Denmark, mm -hmm. what they do, they are equivalent of the counties. Every county, let me call it county for the sake of uh, whatever, mm. every county handles its own elections. Mm. And our election rules allow that because the IBC is supposed to call the parties, tell them these are the people we are proposing to engage. Do you have an objection? Mm -hmm. They never tell us. They never fulfill <laughs> that particular part mm. of the law. So you will later have to realize, like I realized, mm. that your opponents have been given a free hand to practically choosing <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. It's like choosing so your So the referee. electoral officials basically work for your opponent. So what I would say, let every county handle its election. What does that do to us? It means that the IEBC is not beholden to any one person because there will be a committee mm. that is supervising what is going on. Mm. If they hire somebody in my ward, all the interested parties will be able to say this is a person we know has mm. integrity. Mm. There's a person who will be mentioned and will be rejected immediately in mm. that ward. So, and also you solve the disputes yourself. In Denmark, they don't have those petitions like us mm. because any dispute is solved by that group. Mm. What it means is that the electoral commission is supervising to ensure that you follow the law. But it means you are checking on each other because we have a deficit of trust I in not, this country. I, I, I'm not understanding this. Let, let me just finish mm. this. Yeah. You, we have a deficit of trust. Because we sure. know each other and we know we all behave badly. Yes. Mm. You suspect me, I suspect you. We are basically people are trying to steal each other. Mm -hmm. What it means is that if we are in a committee, we are asking ourselves, how do we best hold each other to account? To account. And then you agree these are the, what we will do on that day. Mm -hmm. And it means those who are checking is a group from all the parties, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. If there are three people, there are three people not agreeing. So they are the ones supervising what is going on. It becomes very difficult for you to co-opt. Yeah. I have not, I can't say I've thought every aspect of it through, uh, through and through. Mm. But these are some of the proposals we can discuss round table and see how best to checkmate each other because we are the problem, mm. not the law. Mm. You can amend the law as many times as you wish. Nothing will change so until we change people. our political culture. Mm. Mm. And then number two, accountability. Make sure that anybody who commits an election offense is taken to court. I have complained to the uh, DPP and to the DCI. You remember my exhibits were stolen in Kirgoya court mm -hmm. <laughs> when they are under custody of the court. Right. <laughs> they have not shown any interest in investigating that. Yep. We, we may have to look for whoever is interested to do a private prosecution. Mm. I have complaints about a returning, two returning officers and an election of a, a presiding officer. I have a complaint against a party operative. Mm. If such people are taken to court, irrespective of the outcome, it will send signals that at the end of the day, you are count as an individual, yeah. not as a group. So what we lack, and it's not just for elections, it's also for cases of theft, of murder, mm -hmm. of peop leaders behaving badly. We've often it's said, holding right, leaders to account. Period. We've often said that if one per, if one case were to be prosecuted end to end, we'd yeah. probably see then you know the death, slow death of all of these other things. Do you agree? I agree totally. Mm. You can see the shock 
shockwaves it sends until governors have to come together <laughs> to start saying, give us immunity. Yeah. Immunity from theft, <laughs> immunity from murder. What immunity are you asking for, guys? Mm. That's mm. what we are asking. That's what they want. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What government, what kind of a government, I mean, prescribe, if you could be prescriptive, what is it then that we need in order for us to move forward? We seem to be going round and round. We need mm. a government that will respect the rule of law in every aspect of the world, what, where the law applies equally to everybody without fear or favor, where cases are investigated, prosecuted, and I want to hail our prosecutorial agencies mm. because it's good to say for once, we have seen something that is exciting us. Mm. I want also to hail the DCI. They may not be doing everything we want, mm. but I want to say we've seen reinvigoration mm. of those two. The judiciary, there's some good and some bad. They'll have to pull up their socks. You cannot convince me that the Joey case, the Obado case, the NYS one, NYS two should still be in court mm. even as we handle new, murder, mm. uh, new graft mm. cases. cases. Who's it to blame is for that? Is it the judiciary to blame for that or is it? The judiciary presides over cases. So a presiding officer is in charge of that court, not an advocate. Mm. You can apply for adjournment until you get horse, but it's the court that grants or don't grant. Mm. Okay. There's no need for a court starting 10, 20 new cases in a month and never finishing any the for the next two years. Mm. Come on. The judiciary is showing bad management of cases with the exception of a few who conclude their matters yeah. there's something very wrong of what advantage? in the way the cases mm. are being treated the I mean, management mm, of what advantage i mean yeah. to, to make it very clear here of yeah. what advantage would it be then to hold on to these cases over time i think there's an advantage because you see when you're on the receiving end if it's your case you have taken to court mm. nobody can tell you that you should give up it mm. has stay, stay mm. for, stay for too long let us not ask that question let mm. us ask mm. what is it that we can do mm. to make the judiciary manage itself better that question is over to the cj and his team there is no need of being defensive mm. just go check your returns check your files and see why we are having so many old cases until murder and theft mm. are becoming almost no more. fashionable. No more. Well, there's been this debate, and yeah. it's a constant one, yeah. where the executive blames the judiciary and the, the judiciary, judiciary blames, blames the executive. Right. None of them is perfect, but the judiciary has more power in management of cases, period. Mm. I've been a judicial officer, so I'm talking what I know, not just a minister of justice, yes. not just you a have, lawyer, but there. I've been a judicial officer for six years. Those that argue yeah, that you know yeah. you, you don't want to go against people's civil liberties. If somebody is asking for you know an adjournment because well the prosecution has not provided them in, in, enough information or enough documentation, what do we do? You see, there is case management or case scheduling. Mm. When a new case comes up, there is a time when all parties go before the court for the court to assess the preparedness. Yeah. That's when you raise your questions. And that's when the presiding judge or magistrate can tell you, I will not be taking any adjournment. So if there's anything you want to raise, raise it now. Mm -hmm. You see? And should it be raised later, mm. you can reject it. And if you must allow it, you give the shortest time possible. How is it that the same adjournments go on for a year, for two, yes. for three? Yeah. This is wrong management. And I want to say very emphatically, and it doesn't require money. This is not about we were given less money. <laughs> you know? It's not about the resources. Yeah, Jipangeni. Let, let them be serious managers. Mm. Even if it means having a, a course for judicial officers mm. on management. Should let we read out judges so again? We mean, we've, we, Iringera came, wiped out some judges. We had uh, the Shara Drow team, wiped out some judges. Now we are still having problems. Should we do another round? I think that uh, the constitution and the law allows for self-cleansing mm. and i do not know why the judiciary does not have a peer review mechanism where you can have a few lawyers judges who review the judgments not interfere with you when you're doing your case review the length of time taken there is some a more loose group with the LSK, but I still need think it needs reinvigoration. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm active again in practice, I'm also going to try and see how I can contribute to it. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to call out very good judgments so that those people can 
you know, be, be congratulated yeah. and even co promoted. We also should be able to call out judgments that demonstrate either incompetence, corruption, or both. Because there are things you do until <laughs> you leave everybody with their, <laughs> their <laughs> mouths <laughs> open. <laughs> you know, we should be able, you know, we must checkmate each other, each other. just like in elections. Mm -hmm. We are a country that have decided those, the elite, those who are educated professionals, not just, just judges, we have decided to behave badly. Mm. Yeah. So whether it's the accountants, whether it's the lawyers, whether it's who, look at who is covering for the other when mm. funds are stolen. It's professionals covering for each, for other. each other. We need to checkmate each other. That's all that I would say. Well, it's one eye is too short to have you in the studio. <laughs> of course, we want you to keep coming more often. Let's talk about Na Kenya now for a bit, right? Yeah. So, one, you uh, rose, you you uh, campaigned to, for presidency, and then, I will again. And mm -hmm. you ah, that's the question. I so, haven't said when. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Eric was very excited. But that's unfinished already. business. Mm. Yes. Mm. Good. That's very good. Yeah. So, and then you went to Kirinyaga. You wanted to be governor, and I won. Mm -hmm. And you won. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're taking this case out of Kenya's Supreme Court beyond our borders. Explain uh, Eric, to us. Before we go there, uh, why do you emphatically state that you won? Because it's a fact. Mm. And let's not bother going there. Mm. Let's go why I'm taking the case out. Mm. Okay. But I emphatically say I won mm. without batting an eyelid. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's yeah. bat an eyelid with and the And my East opponent Court. knows I won. Oh, yes. right. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Why, now, why, why outside Kenya? Now, I think you've got to understand the court and what I'm doing there. As far as governorship is concerned, the Kenya court concluded. But it concluded without going to the facts. They used an excuse. Oh, this is an innocent litigant through no fault of her own. She is now time barred. You know? Right. They just looked for an excuse. Mm which the constitution forbids them from doing in article 159 so whom have i taken to court in arusha the government of kenya mm. because of the behavior of its judicial arm um, mm. dispensing injustice to me instead of justice and the treaty of the east african community enjoins member states to uphold the rule of law and democracy i like this so what we are taking to the um, community mm. is look at your member mm -hmm. states at, what at your member state who doesn't follow the rule of law <laughs> who is not faithful to the articles of east african cooperation mm. look at them so that kenya doesn't post out there mm -hmm. in east africa or in the east african community in, in beyond in africa or anywhere else that they are a state that believes in the rule of law if they do then they've got to go back and see why is it it's not happening the current constitution says that justice cannot be sacrificed at the altar of technicality. Mm. Mm. When you say someone is time bad, that's a technicality. As a reason as to why then they would yeah. not go so forward. Just take us right. back to because this, if they had those, gone... For those that may not have that, that uh, yeah. background, yeah. what is it that the Supreme Court said? My case was filed on time. Mm. But they say somewhere along the corridors of justice, mm -hmm. the case became time barred. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a slap up as you're laughing. Right. <laughs> so it's like telling me, madam, sorry. We are so sorry. Oh, we are going to, 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 we're going to dispense injustice to you mm. through no fault of your own. Mm. You know? But injustice all the same. It is such a, redu a ridiculous position from a court, a court of law that should dispense justice. Mm -hmm. Knowingly telling you, we will serve you in justice. Do mm -hmm. no fault of your own, and we are sorry. You if see? the Kenyan government is found culpable, yeah. what is likely to happen? A pronouncement. Mm. Beyond the it's pronouncement? More, it's more like a declaratory. I said issues of, about governorship ended in Nairobi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it is the state mm -hmm. and the rule of law. It loses face already by the case being there. Mm -hmm. We are questioning Kenya, mm -hmm. which poses us holier than thou, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, and opens so, up the constitution. I mean, this is in the constitution, so this is one way of actually also... Actually, uh, where, where, where I'm going with my question is, but this particular court mm -hmm. cannot overturn the ruling that was made by our courts. Can but it? we are not seeking that it be of a that's, not, that's not what you're that seeking. Is, you have to understand what it is we are seeking. Mm. A declaration that Kenya is not following the articles in that it's not following the rule of law. Yeah. And then they could also be asked to compensate. But the thing is, 
states have a way they even you as an individual have a way you project yourself mm -hmm. yeah. there are certain details you'd rather we didn't know of course those are the details that's the laundry exposing. that's the laundry that's, airing, the airing. Yes. that's the laundry that <laughs> is taken to dry one of the things that seems to be glaring <laughs> is that you talk about following the rule of law yes. one of the things that seems to be glaring is that following the tenets of the constitution yes isn't that something isn't that something it seems to be then that something then that is practiced across board if we want to look at uh, coming back to Kenya now. Yeah. It looks like something that is really then practiced in terms of not following what the constitution says. Are we even aware? The, the thing is, this case, by taking it there, mm. one, now in Spice FM and in the listen, listenership countrywide, mm. they are going to know today mm. about East Africa Court of Justice mm -hmm. and the they're going to know that we are trying to push the bar up mm -hmm. higher mm -hmm. on following the constitution. Mm -hmm. So filing a case also serves as awareness creation. Yep. How many people knew that you could take the government of Kenya to Arusha? To Arusha. And you don't have to go to Arusha to file. I filed at the Milimani mm -hmm. Commercial Court. Mm -hmm. That's where the Arusha Court have a small mm -hmm. uh, cubicle. Mm -hmm. But... When the case is being heard, we have to go to Arusha. Go to Arusha. The case was in Arusha on the 30th of, uh, of last month. Okay. And uh, we'll be given a scheduling date soon so that the hearing can, can, proceed. Go, can proceed. I had to debate whether to go to the East Africa uh, Court of Justice or to go to the African Court. And I said, let me start because... Step by step. Mm -hmm. With uh, the East African Court. Yeah. Mm, something. I hear you say that you're still going to run for president. Of course, the details of when um, we, we'll know at, about if later. If you look at me, I'm politically very young. I can see that. So once you see that, uh -huh. we know then that you that know that there's tomorrow, there's the day after, so God, then, will, so God willing. So yes. then with that, I hear you saying that there's some hope because I don't see you from what you've said in the last 45 minutes. Yeah. I don't see you then being part of a government with all these stains and taints that you've talked about. No, what I'm so saying, you see that there's hope for you then to want to be at the helm. Let me say this, that I'm willing to serve Kenyans mm. in any capacity and I'm qualified for all the six seats mm. from MCA to, to president. president. And therefore, the decision on which seat to go on as a person who is willing, ready and able to serve Kenyans will be made closer to the elections. I don't feel compelled mm -hmm. to declare candidature mm -hmm. for any position at the moment. Mm. Elections are way far away. Mm -hmm. Just because a few people have declared and are going <laughs> around, going I'm not going to be pressured. Mm. As but leader of a political yes. party, mm -hmm. let's talk about your party and what yeah. is your party thinking uh, when for the next election. Of course, a party lives for the next election until it, gain, it gets to a position of leadership. NAC Kenya is getting ready. NAC Kenya is on a recruitment drive. And later, NAC Kenya will hold countrywide party elections. Mm -hmm. Now Kenya is preparing for a comeback like no other mm. in what the 2022 season. What does your constitution say in terms of leadership and elections? When should you have elections? Every five years. When was the last uh, election? Last year. Last year in no, 2019? last two years, 20 mm. 2018. 20 2016 16. actually. 2016. Yeah. So you're due for election We are due year. for elections, yeah. And we are hoping that we can be able to renew leadership across the board. Okay. Mm. You, you've, you've had a, a label as Iron Lady mm. um, over time. And we don't know exactly at what point this uh, label came on to you. One, what do you feel about that? And then two, do you feel that it was necessary to wear that you can't to be able stop to move through? people from laboring you because mm. it's not within your control. Of course. Mm. Mm. It doesn't change who I am. Mm. Whatever name you call me, mm. I remain who I am. So for me, is whatever opportunity I have to serve, to use it to the best of my ability. Mm. And whatever little opportunity I have, whether in elected service or in different space, to use it to improve that position that is entrusted to me hmm. yeah so the label doesn't matter okay. if you are offered a position in, in this particular this current government would you i take was it? offered mm. and i said no oh. okay. what i was i was offered uh, uh, the position of a cs mm -hmm. we didn't get into the discussion although there was a hint which area and i'm not going to go into that very early on when the president's petition was still going on we met and he offered. Remember in Kirinyaga, he said, whoever doesn't win, he will offer. Yes. Mm. And I told him, I'm not interested. I mm. told him, your people stole from me and I'm going to court. Mm. 
you see? Mm. <laughs> and I wasn't interested mm. in being appointed, you see? I can support the government without being in government, and it's not necessary that everybody in Kenya be part of government. In fact, a majority... Ought to be out. Okay. Are not ought, are out are of government. Out already. So I am content to be with the majority until my time comes. Mm. Yeah. From your experience in 2013, yeah. and also looking back at Charity Ngilu's uh, campaign in 97, yeah. is Kenya ready for a female president? May I ask when Kenya met to agree that they want incompetent male presidents? Hmm. You what? see, because what I'm when saying, that conference take place, right? when, <laughs> when you ask whether Jury Kenya is conference. ready, <laughs> whether Kenya is ready uh. for a female president, you are insinuating that they'd better have an incompetent male mm -hmm. rather than a female. The fact that we have been elected as female leaders, and for me, 20 years on, mm -hmm. yep. you know, consecutively, over and over again. yes, shows that Kenyans will not choose, but the media must help us. I was decampaigned by the media throughout my campaign. Which one? Presidential? Generally, almost all the media, the presidential. This question of posing all the time whether Kenyans are ready mm -hmm. is sowing a seed that there's something mm -hmm. not okay mm -hmm. with a female presidency and many, many other things. And the word in the media and in many circles was, she's okay, probably she's even the best, but she can't get elected. You'll be wasting your vote. That is actively the campaigning. So first of all, can the media join female candidates by allowing them equal space with the rest mm -hmm. and not making any insinuation mm -hmm. that decampaigns them? Mm -hmm. Remembering that you are all sons of women, you all have sisters and daughters, mm -hmm. And every father is very proud of, of, their, the, daughter. of their daughter. My father is not a gender activist, so to say. Mm -hmm. But he believes in me as his daughter. Mm. And the average pa parent will believe in their daughter, their son. Mm. So let's give each other equality of opportunity. Probably. If it is a woman mm. who will, who will make this country move to the next level. Mm. If I were to look yeah. at history, yeah. women have always had an uphill task. Mm. Not just in politics. Yeah. but in gaining any recognition, even in professional employment. Yeah. Politics can't be better because for the longest time it has been male-dominated. What is it that women should do? Not what the media. The media, you've challenged, and they should take up that challenge, but what should women do to place themselves on that equal footing? Women have done what they can. Hmm. They should never cease vying for opportunities that they want. But women and men of goodwill who recognize that even a home cannot be whole and society cannot be whole without the inclusion of both men and women must voluntarily become feminists. And a feminist is a person who believes in gender equality. Yeah. Feminism is not female. Mm -mm. That's why Obama and the Pope can call themselves feminists. Feminist. So what we are calling upon is men and women of goodwill to become feminists, to open the doors. When you open the door, you're opening for your daughter, for your sister, for your mother. Probably not for me. I'm already there and I know how mm -hmm. to go to my way right. into the whatever. But we must make our children, my children, my grandchildren to have a better time than we have. And we've already started as a country in small ways. I do not know of any family in Kenya today which doesn't take both boys and girls to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us you, move yes. and do better in all the areas. Where would you say that your greatest support is in the country? Sorry? NAC Kenya. Yeah. Its greatest support base. Where would you say it is in the country? Um, There's a follow-up question to it because I was yes, going to ask. Yes, I, I will. I'm, mm. I'm going to answer you and tell you this. We have support in quite a number of places, but it's not possible to say with a tally of who is elected in an election where in Mount Kenya we were deliberately rigged out to the extent mm. that even with the IEBC's claim that I got 122,000 votes to Igoro's 167, I do not have a single MCA. It's just not possible. Mm. That math 
doesn't, doesn't want add add up. So we were literally obliterated, but mm. we have presence in Meru, we have presence in Tarakanithi, we mm -hmm. have presence in Embu, we have presence in Mandera, we have presence in Garissa, in Wajia, we have presence in Nyamira, we have presence in Kisi. If I may pause there, Na Kenya is a party with a national appeal. Mm. Yeah. Bottom line. Mm. Um, as your final closing comment, so that we can conclude the, the, this mm. morning's interview, Martha, yeah, yeah. what would you like to tell the people of Kenya? I would like to tell them that uh, our well-being as a country is in our hands. Mm. Let us really think how we utilize our power to vote. That is a key to better living. Let us elect people of integrity. Let us not follow money. Whether you take the money or not, that is your decision. Yeah. But don't vote with your stomach. Mm. Vote with your mind. We have done it before. That's how we removed Kanu in 2002. Mm. We can do it again. We must do it again in, 2000, in 2022. And I would say I would not encourage you on any of the two groupings, whether Kieleweke or Tangatanga. Tanga. Tanga. <laughs> what they have shown us is that they are thinking only of themselves, not the country, because mm. they, are, they are concentrated in the current parliament. Things are not working for us. Mm. They are concentrated in leadership. Things are not working for us. Let us start to think differently. Outside the current crop of leaders. And the parties will not matter. Mm. Not how big the party is. Cast your vote where you should cast it. Mm. Look at um, Makueni. Kibwana did not come from a majority party. Mm. Look at what he has done for his county. I am saying your vote matters. You can unlock your own potential and the potential of your county. And the next revolution in Kenya mm. will come from the counties. A word at a time. Oh. And then it will go national. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martha Karo, yes. for joining us this morning. We'll invite you again mm -hmm. so we can come and talk about the electoral system. Let's talk about our Kenyan voters because you've talked about uh, how the Kenyan voter makes a mistake deliberately at the point of choosing a leader. We'll have to have a conversation about that in future. That's okay, so long as you have a conversation with the traffic commander <laughs> about, <laughs> about, about Mombasa Road. About Mombasa, but I've enjoyed this session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a good one, Martha Caro.